forgive me for my my hoarse voice. Uh, it's allergy season, so I'm gonna do the best I can. <clears throat> Have some Zyrtex. Yeah, you know, with, with Zyrtex, it makes it worse because uh, it makes me dry, and then I really can't talk. I can't. Even, I need some water, so. I'm tr I try to use as little medicine as possible you know, when I have when I have to I do. Anyway. All right, today I want to talk about about five different issues that are relevant to today. I think the best thing to do is kind of correlate Al Islam and the world state of the world today. So the five topics that I'll be touching on not in their totality, but <clears throat> I'll be touching on them as race, religion, politics, healthcare, and economics. <clears throat> I want to start off with what Allah told the Prophet um, first was Ikra, uh, which is to read, recite, or to proclaim. Uh, when the angel Jibril came to um, Muhammad the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi um, the first word he told him was Ikra, right? And he repeated these words to him. At that point, he wanted him to recite because there was nothing to read. But in today's times, I think it is important that we recite, that we read, and then recite and proclaim knowledge and truth to people. <clears throat> um, when I was working, I was training this guy. And uh, I think that was probably the first word I, I learned in Arabic was Ikra. So I told him, and I was telling everybody I know. So to this day, whenever I see him, he says Ikra. He's not a Muslim, but he, you know, he knows that word and he knows what it means. And I think we all, you know, should focus on learning uh, because uh, elm or knowledge in Al Islam is so important. The Quran tells us over and over again about researching and investigating to find the truth, and that's how we come to truth is by investigating and we are convinced of these truths. <clears throat> and we can find knowledge, not just in El Islam, but we can find knowledge by, as the Quran says, if you wanna know something, go to the experts on that subject. You wanna know about mathematics, you go to a mathematician. You wanna know about biology, go to a biologist, and so forth. If you wanna know about the human person and our relationship with God, then we go to the Quran. And in the state today, as I said um, previously, that we, have, we are in the information age. There is so much information at our fingertips, but is that useful information? It's so, much th so many things that we are able to learn, but are those things something that are of value to us, something of importance? <clears throat> it is a saying, at least about black people, is if you wanna, you wanna hide something from them, put it in a book. This was not always the case. Unfortunately, in America today, in a lot of instances, this is the case. You want to hide something from someone. Some people put valuables in their books, in the Bible, in other books, because they know if someone breaks in, they're not going to look through a Bible. And very rarely do people, are people talking about the books that they've read. In the Quran, it mentions um, of the similitude of someone who has, it was talking specifically about the Torah. It says, the likeness of those who are entrusted with the Torah, yet apply it not, is as the likeness of the donkey carrying books. Wretched is the likeness of the folks who deny the revelations of Allah. So in this instance, it's talking about the Torah, not the books that are in the Bible, but the books or the revelation that was revealed to Musa, alayhi salam. And the Quran says that those people who had the Torah and didn't follow it and didn't apply it, so not just read it, <clears throat> but apply it in everyday life, it's like a donkey carrying books. Or it's a treasure that they have, but they don't understand the treasure. They don't value it. And in, greater, in a greater uh, instance, I would say the Quran, because it is a correction, a completion of previous scriptures is a scripture, is a book or that we should adhere to, we should apply. So this treasure that the, the children of Israel had, the Torah, we have, a, we have something that is, even, that is even more magnificent, something that we should apply more of our life towards, which is the Quran, because it's the last revelation sent to mankind from Allah. <clears throat> so obviously there is some uh, misunderstandings about El Islam. Uh, I deal with people who are not uh, 
privy to al-Islam. In fact, these people, some people are completely against al-Islam. Uh, so in this talk, I'll be, I will be talking about some things that we already know about, but I just wanted to reiterate them. The first being that we want peace. Uh, over and over again, we talk to each other about, we say, assalamu alaikum, meaning the peace of Allah, the peace of God, the peace that God wants, we wish it unto you. The Quran <coughs> says to people who are saying things negative to us, we should say to them, peace, because we want peace. Over and over again, we're saying salam, you know, assalamu alaikum. We, are, we want the peace to everyone, and al-Islam means submissive, I mean, peaceful submission to Allah. That's what we want in this world, but there are people who don't want peace, people who want uh, chaos, people who want destruction for other people. And in that instance, then what should we do? There are people who attack black people, who attack brown people, who attack women, who attack the poor, who attack Muslims, who attack Asian people. I don't like to call them yellow people because I don't know if that is a <coughs> disrespectful term at all. It's, I don't, I've never spoken to an Asian person to, to determine whether that is good or bad, but just to me, it feels like it's something that is uh, uh, derogatory to them. But at any rate, what should we do when, they, when these people are attacking people of minority or people who are marginalized? And what we are seeing around the world is resistance. At 2 o'clock today in Virginia Beach, they're having a march in resistance to the current administration. And we should inform them that their resistance, their marching, their protesting, their post on Facebook, on social media, is jihad. It is a struggle. You see, people have been misinformed into thinking that jihad is some holy war. But it is a struggle that we all face, and they are right now facing, or they all are following, having their own jihad against this administration and the principles that it has set up. So this is not something that Muslims say, or you say before you uh, blow yourself up and say, Allah Akbar, but all of these struggles against this administration, against what is right, what is true, and what is pure, is jihad. In, in fact, they are mujahideen in the sense that they are having a struggle themselves, are going, they are fighting. And the Quran or Allah says that there are three levels. You can hate it in your heart, you can speak out against it, like these people are doing marching, or you can use your hand against it. So in this instance, they are doing the second in terms of struggling against oppression, against injustice. Now, the people that support this administration, whether they know willingly or unwillingly, they are performing an injustice upon people who are minorities. Um, uh, Martin Luther King said that in his time, he said that there are people who are outwardly racist, but there are white people who are sub subconsciously racist. And I believe this is the case today. When the leader of this country, who is their president, he's not my president, says racist things, when he says xenophobic things, when he says things that are sexist, and then you vote for him, either you are saying that you agree with him or you don't care that he has that stance. So it's hard to differentiate the two. When he uh, appoints people who are in the alt-right, those people who are what we consider white supremacists, um, and you don't, and you vote for that person, then you, and, and you vote for that person and he elects those people, you are either in support of him or you are against him. There's no in-between. So it is my uh, experience that people who are crazy anti-Islamic are, are also great Trump supporters. And it is, um, sometimes I take it upon myself to antagonize them. I want them to ultimately come to say what they really believe and what they're really saying. And in many instances, they do. They say the most malicious things. You know how um, in the media they talk about Muslims and how they are so uh, outraged when people draw cartoons of our prophet. But when we say things about Donald Trump, when we say things about anything that is Western, or they see as Western, they say some of the worst things ever to me. Uh, you know, Donald Trump said 
he famously said he could kill someone on Fifth, on Fifth Avenue and his supporters would still support him. I mentioned this to one of them and that person told me, I wish it was you that he shot. That's what he said to me. There have been instances where they talk about me and my mother and all kinds of crazy things. Uh, but they are willing to say these things in some form of anonymity on social media. But these are people that we work with. These are people that we go to the stores with. These are the people that we see every day. And they feel this way. They just want to say it. They, they believe it, but they don't want to say it aloud. Now, we just had an administration with Barack Obama when he, uh, when he passed the Affordable Health Care Act, which they have called Obamacare. And in doing so, a couple of the things that was famously um, that everyone loved about it was that you can't be um, you can't be discriminated against for pre-existing conditions. Another thing was you had you could be up to 26 or 27 years old still be on your parents' uh, health care. Those things at this point are in jeopardy. Now, <coughs> the people that voted against this, what would be the reason for voting against someone who has covered over 24 million people, over these millions of people who did not have insurance? At the point when Barack Obama passed this, we had the highest level of people who were, um, who were filing for bankruptcy because of their health issues. Every single person will be sick. Every single person will die, right? So why isn't it that we would have universal health care for every person? This is a party who famously calls itself the Christian right. You know, they have Christian values, but they absolutely do not follow Christ. The, the, the leader, who was Donald Trump, is a billionaire. When you read about Jesus, he almost hates rich people at least according to what the Bible says. He said it's practically impossible for them to get into heaven. So how is it that leader can't get into heaven, the, their, their spiritual leader, the person whom they believe is God or the Son of God, condemns him, but they follow him? But at any rate, the pre-existing conditions that we have, that uh, has been listed, that are now um, not going to be covered by, his, um, by the proposal that he um, put forth. Initially, the proposal they put forth was rejected. But then, because the person who had it previously was a brown man, he was a black man named Barack Obama, they did everything in their power to overturn it, even though they did not read it. They, did, they don't know what it says. They, they are finding out now the same time we are, but then they voted for it. But some of the things that it does not cover, or it is going to be considered uh, pre-existing um, pre conditions, and this is according to the uh, insurers who, before Barack Obama's care, they said these things were uh, pre-existing conditions. And I just wanted to list them off to you so you can at least fathom how, or at least consider how someone can vote against this. Uh, AIDS, HIV, alcohol and drug abuse, Alzheimer's and, or dementia, um, arthritis, bulimia, cancer, cerebral palsy, uh, con congestive heart failure. Now that is something that is uh, personal to me because my father was born with a heart condition. He had congestive heart failure, yet he lived to be in his 60s. When my son was born, my eldest son was born, he was in the hospital the same time as him and they didn't know whether he was going to make it, but he made it to see not only my first born, but my second born son because of health care. But these people are voting to say that if he, <laughs> that he could go bank, he may file a bankruptcy, or he may die sooner than expected. This is what they are voting for, the people who are supposed to be representing America and American citizens. How can that not affect their voters? But they are so blinded <coughs> by racism, so blinded by partisanism. They are so um, dedicated to their party and not their own country and human beings that they will vote against them, their own selves. But I, let me go further. Uh, heart disease, Crohn's disease, diabetes, epilepsy, uh, hepatitis, kidney disease, another thing which is personal to me. My brother, both of his kidneys failed when he was 19 or 20 years old. He's been on dialysis for 20 years. 
and they are saying this is a pre-existing condition. What could he do when he was 19 years old? He wasn't doing anything to cause his, his kidneys to fail. Another thing is uh, lupus, mental disorders like anxiety, bipolar disorder, depression, oppulsive, I mean, oppress, what, um, obsessive compulsive disorder, schizophrenia, multiple sclerosis, obesity, and organ transplants. Now, my, my brother needs kidneys, right? So one of them is already a pre-existing condition by having kidney disease. When he gets organ, when he gets a kidney, that is also a pre-existing condition. This is what these people are voting for. And I call them these people, because I, 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 they're disrespectful to me, so I can be disrespectful to them. <laughs> Paraplegia. A paraplegic, man. I mean, I mean, what kind of heart do you have? Paralysis, Parkinson's disease, pending surgery, pneumonia, pregnancy, expecting parents, including men, sleep apnea, and strokes. I mean, this is, it's outrageous. And those are very vague because insurers obviously are after profit. When you have health care that is for profit, then you can change the rules whenever, if you need more money, then you change the rules a little bit. So it's still, and it, it's all vague. You don't know the gray areas of what they include and what they don't include. Because uh, there are other there are other conditions that many experts noted could hike their premiums, even if it doesn't consider pre-existing conditions, like acid reflux. I ma'am has acid reflux. Because he has acid reflux, his insurance is gonna be higher. When the idea of insurance is the, the people who are sick uh, the people who are not sick pay more. That, I mean, that's what insurance means. That's why everybody pays into it, so everybody will be covered. Acne. <laughs> Acne. Asthma. Uh, C-sections. You know, if you have a C-section, right? And then you have another baby, then, then it'll cost you more money. I mean, heartburn. High cholesterol. So I went to the doctor, and they said my cholesterol was high. So they told me to watch my diet and, uh, and then come back to him. I told him, I already don't eat this stuff, right? So he said, well, look, just drink in it some more and then come back. I went, I went there. I came back. My heart, I mean, my, high, my, blush, my cholesterol went down, but only slightly. It was because my body produces high uh, levels of cholesterol. So I was born this way, right? It's not anything that I eat. But because of this, I will have to pay a higher premium. Uh, kidney stones. Now I know someone who is an avid Trump supporter who has had several issues with kidney stones. I mean, he's voting against his own self. Knee surgery, Lyme disease, menstrual irregularities, migraines, a pacemaker, seizures. This same, pro I, okay, another friend of mine, about a couple of years ago, he was, uh, it was around the time of Obama. We were talking about voting for Obama or Romney or Obama or um, what was the other guy's name? Uh, John McCain. I can't remember which one it was, but I was avidly talking to him about this and this issue and, and healthcare. Like, this is extraordinarily important. So, to me, there are no great issues. There is truth and falsehood. But the thing is that some people, have, some of the truth is on the Democrat side and some of the truth is on the Republican side. So you have to, to decide which one is the most important. Healthcare, people being healthy, people living longer lives, my father, I went to the doctor with him. They said uh, he could die at any time. He lived years longer because of health care. So without that health care, he would have died sooner. So that my family would have known him for less time if not for health care. But at any rate, I'm talking to him about this. His wife had seizures. I said, why would you vote against your own self? I mean, it's completely absurd to do unless you are voting out of blindness out of illogic, out of irrationality. There's no way you can rationally vote against your own self. But the other thing that people lack, I think is a word that needs to be coined forever, is empathy. The definition, I look this definition up. The action of understanding, being aware of, being sensitive to, <clears throat> and vicariously experiencing the feeling thoughts and experience of another, of either the past or present without having the feelings, thoughts, and experience fully communicated in an objectively fully explicit manner no. without it actually applying to you. Now, I don't know if you all saw uh, Jimmy Kimmel, right? The news, I mean, the uh, TV personality 
who was talking about his newborn son who was born with this condition. Now, he is a millionaire. He said he can afford this health care, but he was crying on television because he could empathize with people who could not afford it. Or people, if, if they had a child who had this difficulty, would be considered a pre-existing condition, and they may not be able to afford it. They may go into bankruptcy because of it. And there were people who are on the Republican side who was criticizing for him for this. They were mocking him. They were ridiculing him for having empathy, for feeling bad for people who are sick who can't afford it. I mean, what kind of people are they? They go to church on Sundays and say that they worship Jesus, a man who was bringing compassion and empathy to the Jewish people. Yet they don't know anything that he says, or they don't care. How possibly could you believe in him and follow him and not feel the pain of someone who has a sick child or someone who is themselves sick? It's outrageous to me. Hate. Crazy hatred. And, and my wife told me that uh, racism and hatred are something that uh, is irrational and illogical, so there is no debating them. Because they, they already think illogically. You can't tell them rational things. Right? What is that going to do to them? If I tell them, I, I told a man, I said, your wife has seizures. He still voted for the man. The man said, I don't care about the 47%. He was talking about black, black people and brown people. He said, I don't care about them. And he was a black and brown person and voted for the man. I'm like, it's, it's like the man said, I don't like you. And then you still vote for him. Uh, at any rate, the Quran says in Surah 49, Ayah 13, O oh, mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and made you into peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. <clears throat> now, looking up the word know, because Allah says he wants to, to know one another. It means to be aware of through observing, inquiry, or information. Having knowledge of info, not having knowledge or information concerning. The second one is having developed a relationship with someone through meeting and spending time with them, being familiar with them, being friendly with them. So this is what Allah wants for us: having a relationship to know and spend time with them. This is what builds empathy to know one another, whatever race creed you are from. I was talking to the brother, um, brother Casa, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he's a very, very um, insightful brother, right? So um, there are instances when there are people come, that come to this masjid who are from another country. And I was talking to him about the subject that we talk about. And every single time, even if it's here or in Jummah, a lot of times the subject goes into uh, to be talking about African Americans, right? And he told me that the imam and the person speaking, or the person speaking, whatever the instance is, should be talking to the community that they are speaking, that they are talking with, they should be giving them uh, basically the remedies from the Quran and from Al-Islam. So the people that are in this community are African Americans. And there are some people who come from other communities, but ultimately he should be talking towards the ills of the majority of the people. So every time I talk about whatever subject I talk about, it always ends talking about the African American people and the African American experience. Because our experience is unique and unlike any other people, however, if I was in Palestine, I would be talking about Palestinian uh, issues and their concerns. If I was in Afghanistan, I would be talking about their concerns. So if I'm in Park Place right now and amongst African Americans, I can't talk to them or I, if I talk to them about Palestine, it would be in, in reference or in relation to how we are feeling, feeling injustice as well. But at any rate, um, and that's the reason that ultimately this will narrow down into African Americans. Even though other Muslims, whatever creed they are, if they are our brothers, we sh they should feel the same empathy and sympathy that, that we have for them and for their cause. Because they have developed a relationship and spent time with us, right? So we all should have empathy, whether I'm discussing something that uh, affects them or not. It should affect them because they, as a body, we are one Muslim community. Yet, we are, we, are face we are facing something particular to us. Now, 
Another thing that I want to talk about that um, people misunderstand about El Islam is the understanding of Allah. And I think a couple of weeks ago I was talking about the love of Allah. And I was talking about, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about something similar. Uh, the word Rahman or Rahim comes from the word rah rah Raham. Uh, the RHM, it means to, I looked in the uh, Arabic dictionary, it says to love, to have tenderness, have mercy, pity, forgiveness, show goodness, favor, have all that is required for, ex for exercising beneficence, most loving, affectionate, and gracious. This is what uh, Allah is to us. When people look at God or Allah in some form of a tyrannical leader, over 114 times it says um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So over and over again it's saying with the mercy, with the love, the merciful redeemer, the merciful benefactor. This is what it's saying over and over again that He has love for us, that He has tenderness for us, that He has mercy, compassion, affection for us. Uh, I wrote that book about uh, God hate black people, right? And I was thinking about kind of in reverse that God love black people. Now we as African Americans, as Muslims. Uh, we understand that Allah loves all of his uh, creation. And he explicitly shows a, an affinity for people who are believers. But it doesn't, but we have experienced something different from any other people on earth. Uh, and that, and because of that, I think that the, the remedy for that, we, we need to express the remedy more and more so than anyone else because we have been faced with such uh, hardships. But because we have, sometimes we need to face hard facts. Um, Malcolm, Malcolm X said in his uh, speech, The Ballad of the Bullet, he called black people political chumps. Marcus Garvey said that they were cowards. He said, are you a coward? Are you an imbecile? Are you a good for nothing? It is our time now to stand up and be glorious. Be the people that we were in previous times. I think that we started civilization. We started, initially I was talking about reading and Ikra. We started reading. We started writing. We created universities before anyone else did. And even when people started with universities, we came from Africa into Europe and we gave them the golden ages. Everything that they are experiencing today came from, from Africans. And they initially were people who were Mukmin, who were Muslims who believed in one God and submitted to that one God. So we have to regain our strength, our knowledge. The first thing we can do is have knowledge. Uh, in, the, in the university, I mean, in, in Europe, when they had two universities, the Moors came and built 17. They built 700 libraries. Uh, in, West, in Western Africa, people learned uh, the whole, the Quran. Everyone learned the Quran the entire Quran. So, so much so that when they were captured, they came to the Americas and they could recite it, whole, the whole thing, and they could write it down, the whole thing. Are we able to now, we have all of this at our disposal, all of this at our fingertips. And because of the Al-Islam, they were able to resist and resist repeatedly over and over again until they were successful. We are the remnants of that. We are the we are the results of their jihad, of their struggling. But are we, are we continuing their legacy as we should? Just look at the state of black people today in America. Are we getting better? Are we doing better? What about the representation of black people on television and in the media? Is that a good representation of us? Is that what we want the world to see us as? I had a friend of mine who said he's traveled all over the world, and he said, in many parts of the world, people respect us, but when we say that we are black, they don't show respect for us because they think that we are still showing remnants of slavery. He said, more so when we say African American, it makes more sense to them because they, we understand our African heritage, or it seems that as though we are connecting with our African heritage, but what does black mean? Is it just to, to people who are who are not Af or not Af who are not Americans, uh, because they they have some dignity, they have some culture. We are creating a culture, but what is that culture that we are creating in America currently? We invented rap music. What is rap music today? 
on social media, how does that represent us? In a positive light or in a negative light? We have R&B, and initially it was about love songs, but now it's only about sex. We have reggae music. Some of it, Bob Marley, this, this shows the, the potential that we have, but then most of it is just for fun. Like, there, is, there are people who are spending their days and times trying to destroy us. They are creating healthcare systems, they are creating economic systems, they are creating systems that are adversely affecting us. What are we doing to stop them? There's a man now whose son is about to play basketball. He got $500 shoes. On social media, they talk about this over and over and over again, but what about the man in the White House who is trying to stop you from getting health care so you will die? I don't care about $500 shoes. I'm never going to buy $500 shoes. If I had $5 million, I wouldn't buy $500 shoes. What I would do is try to stop this person who is trying to stop me and my family and everybody I know from having health care unless you are rich. Barack Obama's system was redistributing wealth. Now, the, the, the way you know whether something is effective or something is for you is if the person who has benefited from it, the person who is uh, holding you down is being affected. If they don't like Barack Obama, you should like them. They like Donald Trump. The people who are in the majority, the people who are in the minority, the 1% who are causing you this trauma, causing this affliction, who created racism, are the same people who are the people in control and the same people benefiting from his policies. That's how you know you shouldn't like him. Because unless you are ultra rich, he doesn't care about you. He doesn't, it's not really racism, it's classism that is the problem. If I was a billionaire, black man, he would be fine with me. But the problem is, it really is classism. So people who are white, who are middle class, are in the same boat as me. They just, they are convinced somehow that black and brown people taking their jobs and hate them. And they are the reason. So when they file for bankruptcy, when this policy, if this policy goes through, and they file for bankruptcy, they'll be like, well, Mexicans did it. If we had that border, or we had the, uh, if we had the wall, they would, we wouldn't have lost our health care. When the person who stole it from you is in the White House, that's the person who did it. But anyway, the reason I did want to mention that is just because uh, I wanted to talk about our representation on television. I saw that guy, um, Jesse Williams, and he was talking about how black, black actors are marginalized. They have only certain roles that they can play, whether they are a criminal, drug dealer, what have you. I mean, the, one of the, the biggest shows right now is about a, uh, about a, um, a music mogul. The other one is about a drug dealer. I mean, like, this is... This is what they think we are. That's why they keep showing us in that light. Like, we don't have the luxury of being shown in that light repeatedly. A white person can be a drug dealer on television because they have a thousand superheroes, right? They have a thousand people who are doing right things. But if we only have this much of the television and every single show is about us being negative, that's what people will see. That's what people think is true. And it's being perpetuated over and over again. So we have to do something to stop that. We have, to show, we have to show that we care about ourselves. Allah says in the Quran, indeed, Allah will not change the condition of a people until they change what is in themselves. We have to change what is in ourselves, and then Allah will help us. And then Allah will guide us to the straight path. But if we don't, we'll stay in the same path we're on now. You see people protesting. As I said, at 2 o'clock, people are protesting right now. Uh, when Donald Trump was elected, right? Someone said, a couple people said that um, it was a good thing. They said it would galvanize black people because they'll see who their enemy is because their enemy is blatant right in front of them. But is that true? Is that what, they do, what they're doing? Uh, I put down here that black people, African-American people were defeated. But then I saw something that Nadia put, she said they're survivors. That's what it is. We're in survival mode. It's not that we're defeated. We see the enemy and it, we have been conditioned to survive. But we need to do more than survive. We need to thrive. We need to be who we are supposed to be. It's not that we're defeated. It's not that they're weak or we're weak or soft. Uh, another, this, this rapper said this thing, he said, um, my pimp struck was, was invented when they whipped us, right? So every time I drive down the street and I see somebody pimping when they're walking down the street, I think about that. It's like, 
they tried to beat our pride out of us, but I'm still, I'm still walking like I'm the man. Like we, we call each other man, right? Because like you call me a boy, but I'm still a man. I don't care what you say, you know. So it's not that we are defeated. It is that we are in survival mode because we are so used to people oppressing us, so used to people fighting us, but we have to overcome. We have to succeed. We have an abundance of hope. We have an abundance of compassion. We have abundance of potential. And, and speaking of compassion, right, because we are the most forgiving people in the world. A man comes and comes to a church and kills everybody there, immediately they forgive him. A man kills someone's child, they forgive him immediately, right? Now this is another, when you juxtapose al-Islam with Christianity and the position of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam and Isa alayhi sallam. Now, in the Bible, now I keep saying in the Bible because I can't say for certain whether Jesus said these things, but this is what is recorded that he said. So it says in the Bible, when he was on the cross, he said, um, forgive them for they know not what they do. So he's on the cross. Now, obviously, this is not true because Allah said he was not killed nor crucified, so he wasn't on the cross. But this is what they believe is true. So on the cross, he is dying and he's saying, forgive them. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, when he comes back to Mecca, he forgives them then, when he is in power, when he has the, he has the resources to kill all of them. All the people who were tormenting him, all the people who was killing his family members and torturing them, that is when you have real forgiveness, when you have the power to stop it. If you are dying and killing, someone is killing you, and you say, I forgive you, so what? I mean, this is, what happened, this is what's happening to us now. What are we forgiving people for? You don't have the ability to stop the punishment or, or to make it go forth. So why are you forgiving people? If you have a bully that is tormenting you and you forgive him, what do you think he's going to do? He's not going to stop. He's not going to be like, oh, I got a heart now. I'm going to stop doing this. He's going to take more of your stuff. He's going to do more bad things to you. And this has happened to us repeatedly over and over and over again. So just the juxtaposition of Al-Islam and Christianity or any other religion, when, we, when Allah gave Muhammad victory over his enemies, the people who were tormenting him, chasing him around, trying to kill him, that is when you have the ability to forgive. And it's up to you. That is when you're showing true mercy. How is he being merciful when he's dying? How are we being merciful when we are dying? They're showing us on television being killed over and over again. The man shot the man in the back over and over. I mean, shot the man in the back while he was running away. Why are you forgiving them? They need to go to jail. They don't need to be forgiven. All right. So, um, one person who did stand for black people, Calvin Kaepernick, uh, is not going to have a job right now, right? I say that we should boycott the, in, in the NFL until he has a job. I mean everyone, the players, everybody. What would happen when they decided not to go to see uh, Donald Trump in the, in the Oval Office? It, the scene looked pitiful when they had the picture because it was half of the people that took a picture with Barack Obama, the same team because more than half of the team said, I'm not going there. Now, what if all the black people in football say, I'm not playing football until y'all get that man a job? We don't know the power that we possess. I mean, Muhammad Ali, um, Bill Russell, um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, all of them knew, their, knew the power that they had, and they used it. There are some people who will express what they should do. But if LeBron James say, I'm not playing no more until y'all get that man a job, what are they going to do? Jewish people were put in a position where the only job that they could have was being, um, was being tax collectors. And what, they, what did they do? But they learned economy, and they learned to use the, what they were only uh, given the opportunity to do to benefit them. If they are giving us the benefit of being millionaires and play a sport to entertain them, let's stop entertaining them. See what happens then. Why can't you? That man, is, LeBron James never going broke, ever, unless he's smoked crack. And even if he did, crack costs $10. He can never go broke. Why can't he do it? That man stood up for black people. And you know what they're going to do? Because we care so much about sports, we're going to watch, we're gonna watch football. That's what we're going to do. Everybody's going to watch football like nothing happened. He stood up for you. He sacrificed. He might lose his job, and he's still going out there trying to support people. But you care about $500 shoes. That's all you care about. That's what you're complaining about and arguing about all day. We should get this guy 500 we should buy his shoes, or he can make his shoes, whatever he wants to. When I can't afford $500.
just to say, you see my, my $500 shoes, because they're going to go out to the club, and then people see them with the $500 shoes. That's, um, our, our values are skewed, man. I mean, it's, we, have, we have too much vested in materialism. But we are ruled by people who don't have morals. <clears throat> you see the picture of when they, when they passed this bill. It was a picture full of white people, right? White males mostly and a couple white women in there. How is that diversity and inclusion? You see the, um, the, NR, the, the RNC, the Republican National Convention. It's almost all white people. They don't represent us at all. And their voters, and, they're, and the voters don't care. They, I mean, they see it out there celebrating people losing their health care, people who might have to file for bankruptcy because they can't afford it. So what can we do to stop that? And, and the idea of greed, the idea of you are already a billionaire, you want more money, more and more money. I mean, even the news and media systems are uh, after money now. I can't watch CNN news because they keep showing people who are liars and they know that they are liars. They keep acting like it's two different positions. Like this is one position and this is another valid position. Which one do you choose? One of them is blatantly lying. You can't keep putting that person on there if they're blatantly lying because you act like it's a, they have a valid case. If I'm arguing with you about the sun, if there's a real sun or there's not, that, you need, that person needs to not be on TV no more. I mean, it's, it doesn't make sense. But they act after ratings. It's not even news anymore, it's entertainment. Now, I've been singing this song over and over again, right, every day called The Bully of the Earth, right? It says, I can't sing it because it's gonna sound terrible, but it says, um, I thought you were the bully of the earth, but you were just a man. White people, white power, white supremacy is permeating the earth today. Everywhere you go, they are in power, or they go and force their power on other people. But they are just a man. That's all they are, right? Which means that you, that we can defeat them. Uh, in that movie, uh, uh, um, what's that movie called? Um, the Predator, right? That crazy alien, when they shot him and he was bleeding, he was like, okay, he bleed, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger said he bleeds, so we can kill him. He's just a man, so we can defeat him. Not only that, we have a law, we have the actual truth. We can defeat anyone, particularly people who are false, people who are lying, people who are deceitful, people who are the worst of people. First thing we need to do is expose them and be moral ourselves. Don't fall victim to the materialism that they want us to fall victim to. I mean, this man has, you know, he has properties, he has hotels, he had all these things, and he is a millionaire, but he still wants more and more money. Like the aunt says, when he said, if you're a hundred people, you can beat a thousand with Allah. But just talking about the help of Allah, right? It says in the Quran, it says, if Allah helps you, none can overcome you. If he forsakes you, who is there after that who can help you? In Allah, the believers must put their trust. And, uh, and in, in, in the uh, Hadith, it talks about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is talking, he says what Allah said, he said, uh, I am as my servant thinks or expects I am. I am with him when he mentions me. If he mentions me to himself, I mention him to myself. If he mentions me in an assembly, I mention him in an assembly greater than it. If he draws near to me at a hand's length, I draw near to him at an arm's length. And if he comes to me walking, I come to him running. We have to believe in Allah. We have to have our trust in Allah. But we first have to understand Al-Islam and, and read and recite Al-Islam to other people. Then we can get people to help. And the Quran says, oh, you who believe, if you help Allah, Allah will help you. Let us do what Allah wants you to do, and then Allah will aid you. As I said, the Quran says, he won't change the condition of a people until they change what is in themselves. We can't have this defeatist attitude. We can't have this survival attitude. We gotta have the attitude of we will be victorious. In the Quran, Surah 74, 31, it says, and none who know the host of Allah, and, and none can, or none know the host of Allah, but he. So it's talking about people who, will, who or not people, but the host that Allah will send to aid you, right? And when I thought about that, I, that verse, I thought about, Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam and Abu Bakr in the cave. So the Meccans are coming to attack them, right? They're coming to kill them. 
because he had already sent most of the Sahaba and the Muslims to Medina. And he stayed behind Abu Bakr and Ali. So Ali stayed in his house and laid in his bed, put the covers over himself, pretending to be Prophet Muhammad So um, the Prophet and Abu Bakr went to, um, to, um, to Medina. And on the way there, the Meccans sent, they sent the Meccans there to kill them, right? Uh, so the Quraysh looking for them to kill them. They go into a cave. And while they're in the cave, uh, Abu Bakr is afraid. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi says, don't grieve, for Allah is with us, right? So what happens is Allah caused a spider to um, make a web over the door of the cave. And also inside of the cave, there was bird's eggs in there. So when the Meccans came, they looked at the cave, they was like, well, they can't be in there because the, the web would have broken and the, the nest with the eggs would have um, been disturbed. So they didn't go into the cave. So Allah protected them so they can get into Mecca or get into Medina. In the Quran, it, it mentions this. It talks about this, um, this, this instance. It says, if you do not aid the prophet, <coughs> Allah has already aided him when, you, when those who disbelieved had driven him out of Mecca as one of the two. When they were in the cave and he said to his companion, do not grieve. Indeed, Allah is with us. And Allah sent down his tranquility upon him and supported him with angels. You do not see and made the word of those who disbelieve the lowest. Whilst the word of Allah, that is the highest. And Allah is exalted in might and wise. Now, just from this story, again, I want to contrast because I love talking about comparative religion. Isa alayhi salam, or Jesus in the Bible, talks about when he fled, right? <clears throat> so Jesus ran away all the time. People were chasing him all the time to kill him. They tried to push him, off a, push him off a cliff to kill him. He ran in between the crowd and got away. He ran from one city to the next, running away. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ran away and came back victorious. The people killed him. I mean, the people killed his family members, killed sahabas, killed Muslims, tortured his family. They tortured uh, Bilal, they tortured... One of the, the first martyr was an African-American woman, was an African woman, I'm sorry, who was a slave. She was the first Muslim martyr. Uh, I can't remember her name right off, right off hand, we talked about her at, um, on the uh, Black History Month. But he came back and was victorious. So, Isa, alayhi salam, or Jesus, when he fled, they tried to kill him, and Allah had to raise him to himself in order to save him. But the, but the Prophet وسلم, was made victorious. And as I said, he forgave, his, uh, he forgave those people who were trying to torment him when, when, in the time when he was victorious. And he says, now, Christians say the word Emmanuel is meant for Jesus. And it means God with us, right? So they're saying, one interpretation of it is they're saying that he is God. The other interpretation is that God has brought someone down to be with us. But in his time of desperation, in the prophet's time of desperation, he said, don't grieve, Allah is with us. That's how we should be. But in the time of Jesus, when he was at the critical moment on the cross, they say, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He thought God left him. Right? This is Al-Islam. What compares to what we, have, what we believe in? Nothing. Nothing. All right? But anyway. I'm going to try to get back to what I'm saying. I'm going to get riled up here, all right? So, <laughs> but, I don't know. I'm saying. Um, we, have, we have to win in the terms of, in the battle of ideas. Because we have the best ideas. We have the best system. We have Al-Islam. The idea of freedom of religion, freedom of speech. Every person is equal. We have that in Al-Islam. We had in Al-Islam 1,400 years ago. They found out 200 years ago and taking credit for it. They had Qur'ans with them, right? George Washington, Thomas Jefferson had Qur'ans. Where do you think they got this from? What, the, the Greeks went to Egypt to learn. Uh, when they went to, went to Greece, they found out how intelligent they were. And they learned everything from not only did they learn the political system, they learned the religious system. The reason that they believe in Zeus was because of the, the mythology that they had in Egypt. So everything that they have today, nothing that they have today, they originated. We originated every single thing that is good and positive. We did. Africans did. All right, and African Moors, as I said, brought civilization to Europe. And they said because they were defeated by the Spaniards, 
we, we lost about 200 years of civilization because they defeated them, and, defeated them and sent them back into the Dark Ages. But Allah says, he will indeed be successful who purifies his own self and he will indeed fail who corrupts his own self. This is our success. And my success cannot come from any source besides Allah. I have put my trust in him. This is what we have to understand and believe that Allah that we will be successful because we have a law, because we have al-Islam. In the Quran it also says, not alike are the dwellers of, of the fire and the dwellers of paradise. It is the dwellers of para the paradise that will be successful. See, we can be successful in this life, but we will most definitely be successful in the next life by being righteous, by following the laws that Allah has given us. But if we follow those laws, if we strive, if we struggle, if we win the battle of ideas with other people out there, if we give them al-Islam, then we will be able to succeed. We are fighting against an oppressor. We are fighting against people who have no morals. So we should expose them for having no morals. When I was talking about the person that we were talking about politics, right? Every time I have a debate on something that's not related to religion, though, the first thing I do is try to find the most moral stance and then stick with that. Because if you take the most moral stance, you will always win, even when it seems like you're losing. So I'm talking to this guy about politics, and then he asked my manager to get involved in it. Now I didn't want to talk to my manager because I have a way of arguing with people that upsets them. <laughs> because I don't talk like, I'm, like I might be right. I talk like I am. And I talk like they're not right because I'm saying this is the right thing. If I say people should live and you say they shouldn't, I'm not going to say you might be right. You are not right. So, I didn't want to get involved in that because he's my manager. He may do something, you know, something against me. So he had already told him to God. Guess started talking to me about the healthcare system. My position is everyone should have health care. What is the opposite of that? Some people shouldn't, or more, all people shouldn't. How can I lose that debate? So I'm arguing with him, and ultimately I got him to say, "Let them die," and that's that's ultimately what they believe. If you don't. If you don't want everybody to have health care, you know everybody can't afford it, your, the, the end result is that they will die faster than they should have, and they will not receive care that they should have. How can I lose that? That's why, I'm, that's why I didn't want to argue with him, and he left, he's thrown off, upset, but I didn't, I didn't even want to do that, but that's what he deserves, because he wants the people to die. <laughs> so we can't lose this. All we have to do is open our mouths and talk. We believe in, the, we believe in helping people. We are not animals where the, the, the gazelle that has a broken leg, you let him go, and then that lion comes and kills him. We are the people who are supposed to protect them. If the weak, the sick, I mean, that's what Jesus said, right? He's there for the weak and the sick, but they are killing the weak and the sick. They let them die. They are living in the, the, the animal kingdom of survival of the fittest, which is what capitalism is. The greatest form of capitalism is slavery, when people work for nothing, right? And you get all the profit. We can't live in a society that people that don't that doesn't that isn't governed by morals and and some form of empathy towards other people. Because if we do, we are as the same as animals. We are worse because we have the capacity to do better, but we choose not to. An animal has instincts. A lot gives him certain amount of instincts to understand and do this and do that. If you, a lion that kills a gazelle didn't murder the gazelle. Allah made him to do that. But if we kill someone, we are killing, we are murdering them because we know better. But why would we lower ourselves to the forms of animals? If we follow al Islam, if we follow and do what Allah tells us to do and strive in his way, we will be victorious. We will be successful. Allah, the God of the universe, said we are the best of people. He said, we are the best of people because we enjoy what is right and we forbid what is wrong. As soon as we accept Al-Islam, we are already morally superior to most of the people on earth. The next thing we have to do is make that step to get them to understand it and believe as we believe. If they don't, then to you be your way, but to me be my way. But if they've never heard of it, then it's almost impossible for them to be Muslim because they are being bombarded with so much negativity about it. But if Allah says we are the best of people, we are the best of people. Let's be the best. It's not more than Any questions? Any questions? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. That big long list that you mm -hmm. read off about what the, this new affordable care thing 
is not going to come. Mm -hmm. Is there any? Did you? Did, is there another list saying what they do? Come? So no. <laughs> right. so, what, so what that is? What that says is they are pre-existing conditions. So this is the, the the game that they are playing. They are suggesting. They're saying everyone has access to coverage. Not everyone has coverage. This is. Yeah, this is, I saw a little bit this morning. So I mean. The Quran says shaitan makes their deeds fair and seeming to them. Mm -hmm. The only way you can say these lies and go home and go to sleep at night is if, if shaitan has made your deeds fair and seeming to you. If you accept the lie, you accept it's okay to let people die. Because what, when you're saying you have access to it, that means, yeah, you have access to it, but you might lose your house. You got to pay a million dollars for it. Mm -hmm. So what they're saying is pre-existing conditions, not that you won't be covered, but it may cost you a million dollars, literally, to get coverage. Exactly. So... That's just not the same thing as you are covered. You have access to it. I have, well, I think, what was that Bernie Sanders said? I have access to a $2 million house, right. but I can't afford it. Can't afford it. Yeah. It's not the same thing as I have, me, have it. You know, that was, they were covered under Barack Obama's care. Exactly. And this way, you have access to it. I have access to anything. Mm -hmm. I have access to the whole, earth, the whole earth, but I can't go there tomorrow because I can't afford it. And that's what they're doing. They're lying on purpose. On purpose, yeah. I, one more observation. Mm -hmm. This morning I was looking at the... TV and their proposal is to cut $880 billion <laughs> from Medicaid over a period of 10 years. Yeah, I saw that. And he was trying to convince the speaker that that's best for the country. And that it won't bankrupt that Medicaid and everybody still will be covered. Okay, that's, that's the evilness of people uh, is that, okay, it's a, what he's doing is a, it's a tactic you do in debates where you, act like you just won, like you said something that was good, like even if you didn't. Right. And the, what's the lady's name? Uh, Kelly Conway does the same thing. Yeah, oh, she's good. They, they say something that's bad, and then at the end they be like, well, doesn't that make sense? Or this, this, is the, this makes perfect sense what they're saying. But in fact, they're saying something that doesn't make sense. If you no. take away $880 billion, right. billion dollars, billion. not million, billion dollars, how can it be better? How can you make it better? If you take almost a trillion dollars away from anything, but the lady spent the estate, and when they get finished with it, she's like, man. That's, the, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like that, that. That's what I'm saying is that there are people who are making the world a worse place. They're making the world a, a bad place on purpose. They got together and came up with this. And, and they voted for it, not, not even reading it, but they're now defending it. So doesn't that make sense? How? They, that's the other thing. That's the other reason why I don't uh, like watching CNN is because they need to have a follow-up question. Like, and they need to continue to follow up. You can't just let, say something foolish and then just let it go away. Because Allah says in the Quran, he says, the, the, the kufar are people, not only people who cover the truth, but people who hear the truth and don't investigate it. Yeah. Like, so and so you, it should be the same way if you hear false of them. Somebody lying, like, hold on, hold on. Yeah. You know, like, explain to me how losing a trillion dollars makes, the, makes uh, yeah, better it. coverage for, the, for Americans. Mm -hmm. Like, because it doesn't. If you, if you ask him a follow-up question to him, what can he say? Well, what he said was that Right now, insurance is good for the government and insurance companies. But after this, it, insurance is going to be better for the consumer. And it's not going to be good for the government. It's not going to be good for the insurance company. So what insurance company you know is going <laughs> to take lose care money, of you? Right? <laughs> and, and it ain't good for them. <laughs> I mean, just, that's, the, that's the idea of having all these things for profit. That's the, that's the problem with having unchecked capitalism is that it, it never stops. It never stops. You just, you just keep trying to get that bottom line higher and higher, and getting more and more growth, which means that somebody's gonna somebody's gonna lose. Well, you just you just ran down the list. Mm -hmm. You know why they, the insurance company won't it won't be affected by it? What you just read, they're, they're not insuring anything. <laughs> they're not gonna take care of nothing. That is, but but this is the thing: the people who voted for Donald Trump are the most affected by it. Those states that voted for him. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, but they didn't hear that. They only heard the dog whistle. Of racism, of right. uh, we're gonna repeal right. no place Obamacare. Yeah. Uh, these black people, because they, you know, they hear something about welfare, I must be talking about black people. I don't want them to get it. Crazy. You know, like y'all making sure y'all can be taking care of us. And then this is the other thing: is that, is that um, people that are protesting are mostly white mm -hmm. Americans, right? Yeah. And that's because they're not used to not getting their way. Like black people are, they they used to people being against them over mm -hmm. and over again. They, that's why we are less outraged, but we should be more outraged because it's 
because it's still people who are trying to hurt us. Yeah. But they they're not used to people doing them wrong. Oh, yeah. Blatantly, yeah. you know, like yeah. I, and they're out in the droves because of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Or how every time we're in a seven, whether it's here or whether it's in another match, it always comes back to African black people. And I think a lot of times, well, for the most part, you know, they don't our story, mm-hmm. you know, as Muslims mm-hmm. here in America is not told, you know. Yes. And so that's why I was so excited that page mm-hmm. I shared with y'all on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Constantly stories, out, you know, positive stories mm-hmm. about what we did with our contribution to, mm-hmm. you know, here in America. And, and I just think that's important for us to keep putting in the forefront, you know, it is, all the time. It is definitely important. You also see articles of discrimination and racism still in Muslim majority countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, against black people, against African Americans, um, and it's largely due to slavery. You know, Af- I mean, Arabs had slaves even before Al Islam. Um, Europeans had slaves. Uh, in India, they had the caste system, so mm-hmm. the darker people are treated as less than. Mm-hmm. Throughout history, mm-hmm. in in Australia, they were killing Aborigine. the Aborigines. I mm-hmm. mean. Over and over again, they saw African Americans or Africans, I'm sorry, as less than. Mm-hmm. And to this day, it's the same way. Be- if they had empathy, real empathy, they would know that the situation that we are in is because of them. It's always because of the circumstances that we succumb, we had to succumb to. Mm-hmm. But they don't. They they look at us. They look at us as criminals first. Right? right. They, they, they say, we, just like, we, was talking, we, were, we were watching a show yesterday, and the guy was in, uh, in, in his car, uh, and he shot a policeman, right? And, but the, the policeman was unassuming. He didn't think he would do anything. But if it was a black person, they would have, because mm-hmm. they automatically see him as violent. They automatically see him as somebody they should be afraid of. They should be on guard. I, ha- I got pulled over. I, to this day, I still haven't seen the two police officers. They were behind me. In my, in my window, they got my license. I had to give it to them like this. I never saw their faces at all. That's how afraid of me they were. They had two guns on me on both sides of my, and it was because I had my lights off and I turned them on um, on coming out of 7-Eleven. But, I mean, that's, that's how they treated me. But this man, they, they let him get back in the car. He pulled out a gun and shot the policeman. Um, that's the, the point I'm making is that they see us as criminals first, right? And they, and they see us as less than them First, it, it's, it's no way you can't take into account that we wasn't able to read for 400 years, and we were treated like and we were treated like cattle for 400 years, and still say something wrong with those people. You know they're criminals. They're bad people. They're not as intelligent as we are. You didn't let them read for 400 years. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? How? What do you expect them to do if you don't do something to help them for what you did against them? You are doing an injustice to everyone. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, the big thing you just mentioned, you were talking about the not reading, you know, 400 years, and uh, I was looking a couple of days ago, talking about the Mexicans. You know, they're talking about the Mexicans that they're doing better uh, educationally wise as we are. Mm-hmm. But uh, the big influx of me- Mexicans, I think I hear in like 94, was, you know, 1994, was, of course, we've been here for hundreds of years, and uh, so that mm-hmm. is a, is a big example, or, or that verifies what you say. Because when they got here, they have concessions for the Mexicans. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, you pick up something; it's got Mexican. You, you know, it's got Spanish on it. When you pick up the phone, they say, "Well, hey, uh, do you want this uh, uh, Evo Espanol or whatever?" You know, when you go to order something, hey, you want this, you know, in English, or you want this in Spanish. And it makes a big difference. So I can see why they uh, do well uh, education wise. It won't like that for us. You know, when we got here, they didn't say, hey, man, do you want that in African or do you want that in English? You know? And it's like, don't you dare try to bring some of that reading, you know? Don't try to, yeah, so but listen. And it makes a big, big difference. It's, it's two different things, though. Like the immigrants now that come here and start businesses, they're like, why can't you start a business? They are. Uh, given money to start these businesses. They don't just have these restaurants and things just on a whim, you know? Right. Um, not on, and, and we didn't, and, and, and that leads me to reparations, right? Is that 
when the Holocaust happened to the Jewish people, which was horrific, right? It lasted for 13 years. They gave them an entire country. You understand what I'm saying? And then to this day, they're still giving them $3 billion. Uh, when the Japanese were put in, concern, um, in uh, concentration camps, they gave them reparations. What they did with black people, they said, apparently, they said they don't have what their, their anger won't drive me to do anything, so I don't care. I'm going to let them do, I'm not giving them anything. That's what they did. That's what happened. We were slaves for 400 years. Worse than, in, not, it was a thousand times worse than the Holocaust. You died in the Holocaust. These people had to live in the worst conditions ever. Their families, women were being raped, and families split apart. Your father and mother and your children was somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And they said, they, 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 the government said they should get reparations for it. And then they was like, you know what? If we don't give it to them, what are they going to do? And what did we do? We did nothing. That's why Malcolm X, Malcolm X said you're political chumps, is that we, we really don't have a platform to make change. All we're doing is hoping. We don't have anything to force people to do anything. You can, they cannot say, they can't talk the, the, what they said about black people and Mexicans about Jewish people because they have power. They have influence. We don't have any. All we, hope, all we have is we hope they do the right thing. We gotta, if we are moral, we hope they'll be moral. And they haven't, they haven't done it yet. They still haven't done it. Right? So we, we got to do something. Because we, yeah, we just got to do it. We got to do it. That's what I'm saying. We got to use That's what I was talking about where in, in Europe when they made the, the Jewish people business, uh, made them bank um, tax collectors. Mm -hmm. they, when it, was a, it was a time of feudalism, which, was, which preceded uh, capitalism. That's the reason that they are such, they're so good in finances right. and in banking, because that's the only job they gave them. If, you, if the only job you give me is being a basketball player, and a football player, a baseball player, and a boxer, and I get millions of dollars, we should be doing something with that. That's true. Right? And we have the opportunity. We have, now, this is the other thing I wanted to mention is that you, I think you were talking about the educational system of the Mexicans. Now, African American women are getting the memo. You know, they're the largest demographic of college graduates. It's the man who is not. I go to a, um, to a boot camp where I work out, right? African-American women are there. The men aren't. The men are home watching football, watching basketball. They are the people not graduating. They're leaving us behind. We, probably because we were the most broken, but we got to step up to the plate, man. Still we still have to step up to the plate. Uh, and 9-11 happened. They said um, the people that became Muslims more than any, any other group was women. I don't know the percentage of with, with black women, but... There are black women that come in here and, and take the shahada. I don't know any man who is, I do know one man who took the shahada, but, uh, but they should be taking it in droves, particularly black men. I mean, they don't, they don't go to church, right? The churches are filled with black women. They are more spiritual, they are smarter, they are healthier. What is the black man doing? We got to step up. I see a majority of the movement towards the uh, uh, a, a, a lot uh -huh. of Especially a lot of ones, you know, from Mario's age, 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 age. Now, the, the thing with that, now, I have a huge problem with that. that. Now, the reason I wrote that book, Moving Towards What? I mean, yeah, I, 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 uh, it's like Afrocentricity. Oh, okay. okay. Kind of like. Right. We are God. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah that, back to that. <laughs> yes. Now, the reason I wrote God, Does God Hate Black People, was primarily because of one of those people who was, is somewhat of an Afrocentrist. Uh, he's, he was talking about. Um, the Abrahamic faiths and how has that affected African American people? And he was blaming it on God. And his his resolution or solution to that was black people are God. He specifically said women are God. Black women are God. Now, what he's doing is trying to tap into the same thing that Nation of Islam did, because African American people are downtrodden and people look down on us. You raise them up, but he raised them up higher than he's supposed to. In the same way, in the Quran, when Allah says. Uh, Jesus or Isa alayhi salam was nothing but a servant of Allah and a messenger of, and, a, and a messenger of Allah that's the highest degree you can be as a human being but compared to Allah he's nothing you know what I mean so if you raise a human being a black man and say that he's God you don't have to say he's God Allah created him you're already valuable he created you on purpose and for a purpose that purpose is to be the most righteous you can be you don't have to elevate somebody to the level of God whether it's a man or a woman but that's what they're doing, but none of them believe in Kemite teachings. That's, that's the point of it. Like, th this is what they do. They tell you a problem, but they never tell you the solution. Ask them, what do you want me to do now? 
do you want me to worship Osiris? Do you want me to worship Isis? Because none of them, none of them do. Not. Who's going to worship a, a, a man that has a falcon head? Who? No. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They, they're saying things that are foolish just to, just to, and then this is the other thing that men are doing that. The reason that men are doing it because they want to stay in the world. Right. Right? Because they can do whatever they want to. The, per, the people that are sending that out, Alice Lund, first of all, you, you gotta be, you gotta do some bright things, and everybody know what you're supposed to be doing, right? But what do you do when you uh, follow Kemite religion? I asked the man specifically, I asked a woman, I said, could you give me the, the scripture I need to read? She said, there is no scripture. There's nothing that you that tell you what to do. How you, how you know what to do? They said, just be spiritual, which means nothing. There's, I asked the man that question too. I said, what do you think people say, I mean, mean when they say be spiritual? He said, it's a cop out from following the religion. That's all it is. They don't want to have do's and don'ts. And in the Kemite faith, they have 42, um, what is it called, Ma'at laws. I mean, it's the same thing as the Ten Commandments, all of those. And then it, all it is is leading to Al-Islam. Okay, Jewish people believe in the Noahide laws, right? They say now Jewish people believe in these seven laws that was given to Adam all the way up to Noah. And to everybody who was a non-Jew, they're supposed to follow these laws. And then a lot, and then God gave them 613 commandments only specifically for them. So what they're saying is Allah gave people rules and laws all the way up to them, but then they stopped there. But what happened is Allah gave laws and rules to everyone. It was just in progression. The reason he gave seven laws to Adam because it wasn't a million people or seven billion people on earth. And then the final revelation was the Quran. So those first people, Adam and all those people, and up to the children of Israel were following Al-Islam. But the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, completed the faith. He is perfected it. So it's been going on the whole time. They've just been naming it different things. Whatever country it is, they call it this or call it that. But ultimately, when it landed in, in Arabia, it's called Al-Islam. And that's what they've been following this entire time. And what they are following is just a broken version of it. Even mythology, Greek mythology, Egyptian mythology, Hindu mythology, all of those originated with one God. And what they did was they used the attributes of Allah and start worshiping each of them individually. You know we have 99 names of Allah. They start worshiping in them individually, mm -hmm. giving them their own personality, mm -hmm. their own deity, saying, oh, this is the God of love, this is the God of wrath, this is the God of the sun, this is the God of the moon. When Allah is the God of all of this. I mean, they just, it was just different attributes and they personified them. So they don't believe in anything, right? Anytime, you, anytime anybody says anything about Al-Islam, particularly to those people, just ask them, what is, what, juxtapose what you have with Al-Islam. And they don't have anything, so you don't even, the debate right. is over. Because what they're going to say is what they think. And then the next person says, this is what it is, and this is what it is, and this is what it is. It's something arbitrary because they have the ability to do what they want. They, they don't have any accountability. They don't believe, because they, they don't believe in an a, a ultimate God that is going to judge them. Just mm -hmm. opinions. If you, we, we are on this earth, right? And we have a soul. And we have a fitna, we ha a fitra. We have a inclination, a, a, a disposition towards right, righteousness. Why would we have an inclination towards righteousness if there is no punishment and no reward for righteousness and not doing righteous. That's what, I mean, they, they're basically rendering our life now as irrelevant. They're just almost the same as atheists. They're almost the same. The only thing they're different is they're saying that God is the people walking around here, human beings. Right. How are we God when we was in slavery for 400 years? I mean, like, every person who said that, that they were God, right? Yahweh been Yahweh. People said Jesus was God. Uh, um, Master Farah Muhammad, all of them were put in jail or captured. How? How can you capture God? That's how you know they're not God. Mm -hmm. like, that's how you know black men are not God. Jesus. Black women are not God. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. All of them were captured. How? Allah can't be captured, ever. So which one do you want to choose? Which one are you going to pick? God who got captured or the one who didn't? <laughs> Like a no it, it is. It is. That's this. That's my problem. That's that. You know. That's that's why I, I can't stop talking to people because it is a no-brainer. But they still believe it, even if I talk to them just like that. And they, that's what is it? Cognitive dissonance. They know that makes sense, right? But they'll go on believing it. How? What can you do to somebody who says, 
or who doesn't acknowledge, what they do is they just live in denial. He won't answer and say that's a no-brainer. It just stop talking to me, right? But what do you do with somebody who knows it's true? That's that's what a kappa is. That's what a someone who knows the truth and then and then does the opposite of it. That's exactly what it is. When you break it down to them completely, God get captured. God didn't get captured. Which one you choose? And they still choose a God to get captured. That is what a kappa is. Do you crack your son up like this all the time? He is cracking up over here. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> all right. Uh, is that all? Any that questions? One, that was wonderful, though, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much, brother. I just want to make one comment. So, those people that you're saying don't want to make the sacrifices, like, you know, your, your LeBron, and don't nobody want to be the first captain of the war. Don't no, nobody want to be the first. But they're not the first. I mean, what I mean is, this, to, to, when we start, when you start moving against the, the mm -hmm. establishment, establishment. There's gonna be some casualties. So and Craig Hodges did. He got and they blackballed him. Um, Chris Jackson, whose name now is Mahmoud Abdul Raoul, mm -hmm. got blackballed. And LeBron James always speaks out against social issues. His only push would be Al Islam. If he was a Muslim, he would sacrifice for it. Uh, there's a there's a another guy who does spoken word. His name is. Something Jab Jabir, I can't remember what it is. He played international basketball, and on their jerseys they have uh, advertisements for alcohol. He wouldn't, he wouldn't put them on at all, right? So, so he just said he wouldn't. I mean, so if, if there's something, because he already has the inclination towards do so, doing something right, LeBron James does. Every time a social issue, he says something about it, but he just doesn't go far enough just because he needs another push, or he needs someone else to help him. When when they created that coalition, when Muhammad Ali. Uh, Muhammad Ali is the, the heavyweight champion of the world. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like he was the most popular person of, of, mm -hmm. of that time. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, all of those people. Mm -hmm. Maybe if they had somebody to say, "Listen, we're gonna do this together," they would do it. Or they just need a push. If if the supporters, the people who watch basketball, black people, I mean, if your family, you have somebody in your family, you, I'm, playing, I'm LeBron James. I'm like, man, you see what Kelly Kaepernick did? What, what you gonna do? You know what I mean? Like. Somebody just to, in their ear, they're like, you know, you need, you can do more, you know? Mm -hmm. He has done a lot. I don't, don't want to criticize him because I criticize him about basketball, but outside of basketball, he does everything he should. He could do a little more, mm -hmm. but I can't say, I'm, it's not for me to say how much you should sacrifice, right. but I, I know they can. I know more of them can. Mm -hmm. If they use their power, they're able to. They're able to make change. Um, they were talking about having a black basketball league. Like, who's going to watch a basketball league without black people in it? Mm -hmm. Who's going to watch football without black people in it? Mm -hmm. yeah. They have the ability to, they just, we are still in survival mode. You got to be in conquer mode. You got to say, listen, all right, oh, yeah. what you going to do if I do this? Mm -hmm. what, what you going to do? Ain't trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what you have to do. You got you got 300 million. He said he's trying to be a billionaire by whatever age. Who's that? Uh, LeBron James. So he has to be close to it. How are you going to lose a half a billion dollars? Right? If you stop now, you should not lose a half a billion dollars. I think yes. we, it's, it, like you were saying, what can we do? talking about the committees last week, and I uh, said I wanted to be in the dialogue committee. So me and uh, Dao, one of these, probably on Tuesday, because I'm supposed to open the mass year up on Tuesdays uh, for uh, Makure prayer. Before then or after then, I'm going to have a table out. Uh, we need, I do need some more flyers, because we're almost, almost out of flyers that we have from, from the mass year to give out. Uh, and then I think we should walk around this community. I mean, it, it, this is what I uh, suggested last week, is that there are, I mean, well, mentioned is that there's a lot of Muslims that are here, but they're in different parts of uh, the 757. Some of them are over in, over in Hampton, some of them are in, um, in Portsmouth, all different areas. So <coughs> if we want more people here, we got to get this community that we're right in the middle of. We need to talk to those people, and then we won't have to have the burden on people that are living right. in different places. So. How y'all doing? Um, I'm I'm like, like, I'm 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 like,
how you would let the deal take you. Um, it's very powerful what you were saying. Thank you. I just want to share uh, something that I remember. Um, that, um, what's his name? Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey. Today, at the Brewery Times, Union Mission, mm -hmm. certain churches, things like that. But I remember you, man, man. Mm -hmm. This man pushing community development mm -hmm. and building, like what you were talking Absolutely. about. But all of those programs that were very successful, they mainly provided food, mm -hmm. trying to find some form of shelter, mm -hmm. trying to find provide some form of clothing. Mm -hmm. And um, those are resources that, that's money. Mm -hmm. I don't have it. Man. But somehow we have to come up with resources when we can tie the community into us. That, that's and like you were saying, mm -hmm. and it's mainly community development. The guy that's the uh, mayor of Norfolk, mm -hmm. I was a little boy when I saw his dad. I'm, I'm thinking that he probably was a military guy. He established his firm, huh? But the first thing he did was he stood on the corner and he talked to him. He connected with the community somehow. And, and then he was a smart man. He did well. And then, you know, his son did even better. But the main thing is, I mean, I'm just saying I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just want to yes, contribute mm -hmm. some information. Now us, the Muslim, mm -hmm. we have the truth, we have the information, but it ain't enough. And I'm into it. See, a lot of times we get that and we are satisfied with where well, I got the truth. But what we have to do is somehow we have to do, and we got to somehow connect with the community because we got the best. And you, what you're saying, we've been there, we got mm -hmm. the strongest foundation, but some how we have got to get involved in the community. And the brothers that's committing a the crime, they're trying to say that something's wrong with our people. But if you got a man that don't have any education, <laughs> and he can't, he no marketable skills, he can't get a job, he can't take care of his family, he's going to the street. And then if he get in a misunderstanding with a guy who looks just like him, they say we're still suffering from him. The lingering effects. Mm -hmm. with, with this stuff, yep. right? I need that also. That is, that is but true. also, what our people do to each other in the community, it's not that just that they won't do that. Most of them don't have no education. And a lot of them don't have no model job skills. And I just want to say, you know, what I saw. Mm -hmm. Well, they, I mean, they've said in... Uh, with crime is always in connection with not having education, I mean, not having education and jobs, right? So if you don't have uh, education, like you were saying, and there are no jobs available, then you are in put in survival, put in survival mode. Uh, the thing that I was thinking about when you were speaking was that, as you said, we what we do have is the truth. That's what we can, like you were saying, we can connect with other people, and that is the way we can uh, get those other programs. Because we can't do it ourselves. We can't do it with it. We are struggling ourselves, right? But the same way they build roads or people have, if they have $10 to give or $5 to give, everybody's $5 to give, if it's a lot of people, can cause, can make things better. So what we need to do is go out into the community and get as many people who are interested in Al-Islam to come here and learn about Al-Islam and become Muslims. And then that way it's not on the 20 people or the 30 people or however many people are in this, in, um, in this community. We need to build a community that way the burden is not on us. Then we can have different communities for different things. They, what they have, they are not satisfied with. You were talking about Marcus Garvey. Um, I was reading on Haile Selassie. Both of them were Christians, right? But they had a different kind of Christianity than what is out there. Their Christianity is do nothing and believe in Jesus and go to church on Sundays. The Halas Lassie was a emperor and, a, and he was fighting in the wars. Like, you know, Mount Marcus Garvey was telling, he was a businessman as well. And he was saying, let's go back to Africa. They, they don't have that mindset. Their mindset is 
let's overcome and let's 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 um, endure, and then we'll get paradise uh, later. Which that's the still the slave mentality. That's what they gave it to you for to think that way. So there is different forms of Christianity. So it's not that we just have to make everybody Muslim. We can have Christians, but they need to change their mindset also. It's like you got to do something. You can't just be a Christian. You can't just wait for heaven to come. So if you don't want to be a Muslim, that's fine. But be a Christian that does something. Be a Marcus Garvey Christian. Be a Haile Selassie Christian. Not a Christian who go to church and then come home and then go to work. Um, wait on but, the yeah. Mm -hmm. But when they do that, they'll be rubbing elbows with Muslims. That's what it should be. We should all be out there in the community doing something. So if we can get this community right here, that's, that's what I'm going to try to do. All right? So I'm going to have a table out here. I'm also trying to go around, talk to different people in this community to inform them about Al-Islam. Inform them of the correlation between how Muslims are viewed and how black people are viewed. Because they're both viewed as criminals. And they're both viewed as their culture is inferior to Western culture. When it is not, it is superior to it. Everything that is in Western culture that is good came from Muslims or from Africans or African Muslims. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, um, uh, just what my, what my man was saying, when you speak about, about the imam, uh, the imam had gave a cookie for once, and he had said, because the man was always, like he said, he was always pushing communities mm -hmm. to develop. So the imam said, if he was to put, uh, put, a, put a hat around and pass it around and put down what you do in the community. So what would you be to put down? You know? <laughs> so he said, if anything, he said, go out, join a civic league. You know, join a civic league. Uh, he was talking about picking up paper or something like that. But that, that particular sermon, it changed my life. Mm -hmm. You know, so right after that, I went to join civic league, mm -hmm. one in Eagle Side, and it's been years ago because I moved and everything else. Also joined some other uh, organizations down in in, uh, in Norfolk. But uh, like you said, by doing that, putting doing your part, he also said that man also said that we as people of uh, uh, being we as religious people shouldn't just come come and go. We come and we go. He was saying about going to the mosque or to the church on Sunday. Come to go to church, come home. Church, come home. But we're doing nothing out mm -hmm. in the community. So as a result, people don't know you. Mm -hmm. You know, all they know is that you're Christian. All they know is that you're Muslim. Mm -hmm. But they don't see them in the community they're doing anything. So uh, I just say this uh, uh, real quickly. But with the uh, uh, um, the the civic league, uh, I was on the, the the newspaper. You know, committee to go out and give the newspaper, right? Mm -hmm. well, uh, try to take it to the to the one across the street. It was a Jehovah Witness uh, thing, you know. And ask them, you know, could you put some of these, could put, to put some in the store, some, you know, ask the, the, the church, could you put some of them out, you know, by your thing? And they was like, we don't want none of that, you know. So the thing is, uh, you a church, and you're supposed to be about the community. Your church is right there in the community, the civic league right across the street. How could you expect? Your community is supposed to grow with your church being right there. You see? You can have drug dealers and whatever to pull up in your church. Because the ma'am said that you just can't be worried about your, about yourself. Because if not, if you do, then later on, the people in the other neighborhood is going to start filtering. Mm -hmm. So then you ain't going to be get to get no peace at night. Because you can be constantly looking out the windows to make sure that your stuff is good. Mm -hmm. You know? So all that goes back to community development. Getting involved with the community, you know, with the police. If, you, if, if nobody knows that police officer, you just come around and, you know, it's like, who, who are you? But at the same time, like it was talking about the police guy that grew up in the community. So he know, hey, man, stop what you're doing. I'm going to go tell your mom. You know, I know your people, you know, so you can relate to them. But if you ain't out there talking, you just coming to the, to the thing and going back home to the, your place of worship for the community. So that, that, that reminds me of what I was saying previously about people who are Donald Trump voters and how it's affecting them now. Initially, they was like, oh, there was Mexican people here upset about. There was black people here upset about. Now, because greed never is full. It's never satisfied. It needs more money and more and more and more and more. So now, now I got to go to the, the, the middle class poor white people. So let's take some of their money away. Now they're in town halls screaming and hollering. Initially, they didn't, that's, that's what I'm saying. They, they didn't care at first when it was about them. Because they were looking out the window like, oh, that's them people. 
oh, that's them people. Now it's me. Right? That's why we can't sit around and wait for justice. We have to go and find it. Make justice. That's why Allah says that he said, you got to go out there and change it. Don't just hate it in your heart. That's the least for them. Because you hate it in your heart, it's not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. Is it? And, um, I think we should also ask if there are any city, state, or government funds available to mm -hmm. us if we represent a certain modality of treatment mm -hmm. or a certain modality of help in terms of the community. And uh, I think that some uh, churches in this area, I think that they have programs mm -hmm. that's the, the, it's funded by mm -hmm. the city. They connect to the city. So uh, with the little backlash that we're getting because of the way that some people see Muslims, I believe that there are just as many that see us for what we really are mm -hmm. too. And so if we can somehow get involved in uh, diversity uh, and connect somehow more with the city, mm -hmm. with other people, we can put ourselves in position. If there are some funds like that, mm -hmm. then it's funds probably coming from private sector mm -hmm. or people that see that this group is mm -hmm. helping people. Yeah, so if you do have some people, they don't, might not want to do the work. But in they, high, put, yeah. they know that they got all this money, mm -hmm. so, but not only say something, you know, I need to get a little more involved on Sundays and doing things. Absolutely. Uh, I don't, uh, I mean, do you have any recommendations about what we should do? I'm, I'm going to go out, first I got to get some more flyers. I probably need to talk to the imam about where he got those from because I wanted to be something that has Mashiach William Salam on it. So if I give out a flyer, they know where to come back to and it's something that's approved by the imam. Right. So, uh, he had uh, some the basic tenets of Al Islam, and then he had um, I think worship in Al Islam. Um, but if I can get some more of those, or well, I think we got two still maybe out there. I can make some copies, or I think Dawood can make copies, right? Uh, we can get some copies made of those, and then have something to give, you know, and then ask them to come in. Just you know, just come in and see, you know, tell them how you know just modestly, and just get them to come in. Because there's some people that come in here, and, and I thought were Muslim that weren't Muslim, but the one girl came in and had the jab on. She's, she's actually supposed to be here this week or last week uh, to take the shot of Tane. Um, uh, she didn't make it this week, but she had the hijab on. She had two, two daughters that had the jab on. She wasn't a Muslim. She just you know, knew you know, how to. She was ready to be Muslim. Yeah, she was ready to be a Muslim. Yeah. All right. Assalamu alaikum.